Hey guys, what is going on? My brain is about to blow up. I've been reading this book called uh, The Little Schemer, and it's about this programming language called Scheme. And in this programming language, everything is done really difficult in a very difficult way. And I spent eight hours studying it, so my brain is like fried. But I'm excited to take a break from studying it and get on with teaching something about computer programming in Python. So we covered in our last video, Booleans, and we talked more specifically, we covered the Boolean logical operators. We talked about and, and we talked about or, and we talked about not. So oh, another thing I wanted to mention to you guys, I had it open here so I don't forget. If you guys are on my website, you can write code directly underneath while you're watching the video. So you can write something like uh, print five or whatever and hit this and it'll run it and actually give you the results. So if you don't, if you're having term, if you're having problems running your code or you just want somewhere easy to run it, well, you can go here and watch the videos and run it at the same time back to where we were. Okay. So as you can see, we covered a lot of this stuff, right? With and, or, and not. So now let's do some examples where we combine our conditional control flow with our Boolean logic, okay? So this is what's gonna tie it all together. This is what's gonna allow you to make powerful games and do powerful things right now, okay? Not in 100 more videos, not reading one whole another book. You can start to build games and functional programs doing what I'm about to show you, okay? So let's get to it. So you saw, I showed you, okay, you have Boolean operators, like you do true and false, and you get some result. Now, I also showed you how you can have some examples like Johnny homework and this, and then this code runs here, okay? I showed you that at the top, so let me just bring that down, whoops. Um, the whole example. This is not real code. This is just, uh, you know, this is gonna give you wrong answers for now. So now let's try to do those things where if you had an employee that was getting paid over 40 hours and you wanted to give him overtime pay, again, let's tap it all in here and let's see how that would work. So if I did uh, Bob hours worked and I said, Okay, he worked, let's say 40 hours, and if I said, if Bob hours uh, greater than 39, then print, he worked overtime. For some reason, we have less than 40 hours as overtime, but whatever, never mind that. He worked overtime. So let's see if that prints out. If it does print out, then that means he worked overtime. As, and as you can see, Bob hours worked were 40, 40 is greater than 39, so that part evaluated to true, and then you got back this statement. Now, what if we wanted to make it a little bit more interesting? Let's go back to the example of the kid where he throws the garbage and he does his homework, right? So for example, let's say Johnny homework uh, is equal to true, meaning he completed his homework assignment. Now let's say, uh, Johnny, whoops, Johnny throw out garbage and let's make that also true. So he's done both of the things. Now let's see if he gets to play um, a video game, okay? Let's, let's see if he gets to play his Xbox 360. So if Johnny homework, right? J Dad says if Johnny does his homework and Johnny throws out the garbage, Oops, I'm sorry. Then um, Johnny can play Xbox 360, right? So if that statement prints out, he can play Xbox 360. And I don't know why I'm writing Xbox 360. I, I'm, I feel like I'm living in 2005. Xbox One has been out and I'm pretty sure in the next few years they're gonna bring out the new one. So let's change this to Xbox One. And let's hit enter. So it printed it out. Johnny can play Xbox One. How did this work? Johnny homework evaluated to a true statement. Johnny throw out garbage evaluated a true statement. The only time you get back a true when you combine something with an and 
is when both of the statements are true. So true, true, and we got back that, right? Now, just for some little exercises here and there, what if I did something like not Johnny homework, uh, oh, whoops, Johnny homework, or Johnny, uh, Johnny throw out garbage, right? What do you think I would get here as a result? Hmm. Let's think about it. So if you guessed it correctly, good, pause the video, or let's try to figure it out together. So not throw out garbage, not true, right? Throw out garbage, true, not true gives you false. And this part is true. So you essentially get true or true, and then not true or true gives you back true, because for an or condition to value it to true, only one of the conditions have to be true. And then calling not on a true statement gives you back a false, and hence we get a false, okay? Again, I'm not gonna focus so much on these contrived forced Boolean examples because your thing is never gonna get like that. And uh, But it's just good to know how it works, right? It works through the inner parentheses, inside of the parentheses first, and then it goes outside of the parentheses and starts to evaluate things, okay? so. You can see we were able to put things together. Now, imagine if you were making a game of rock, paper, scissors, right? Let's rock, paper, scissors, right? I can say if human picked, uh, let's say rock, and computer picked scissors, now I can say if, uh, now I can say, let's see, what, what can I say? I can say something like, if human equal equal rock and computer picked scissors, then who wins, right? Who gets the point here? So I am going to say that human score is equal to one, okay? So human picked rock, computer picked scissors, right? In rock, paper, scissors, just in case you didn't know, rock beats scissors. And now let's check the human score and you can see that I got back a one, okay? So that's why if conditions are so important, we can also start to tack them on, okay? So let's say that, um, let's say if human picked rock and computer picked scissors, if this was not the case, what if there was uh, some other case? Let's say computer picked something else. So let's say computer is bananas, right? So if I write this line of code, how can I check for other things? So I can say, whoops, I can say else if, oh, I gotta get outside of the if statement. I can say else if computer, uh, sorry, human picked rock and computer picked uh, bananas then you can say, I don't know, computer is equal to, uh, computer score is equal to zero and human score is equal to zero because bananas is not really a valid thing. So you get back, both got zero. And then it says something like print, uh, you can't pick, oh, whoops. You can't pick anything other than rock, paper or scissors, right? Something like that and let's hit it. And so you can see that first it checked this if condition. It checked if human is equal to rock. Well, human was equal to rock. The only way this statement will run if both of the statements are true. That's what the and forces you to do. If we had an or here, what it would do is it says, if human is rock and computer is scissors, okay? So in our case, it would go, is human equal to rock? It would say true. And it would go, or computer equal scissors. It would evaluate that to false because bananas, bananas right there does not equal scissors. So it would go true or false. It would evaluate that as true because true or false is true. And it would go, oh, okay, human score is equal to one, okay? 
But we don't want that. We want both of the things to be true. If human picks rock and the computer picks scissors at the same time, that's when the human wins. But in this case, computer picked bananas. And we said, if you pick bananas as, uh, you know, if that happened where human picked rock and computer picked bananas, we, we can say that, you know, you can't pick that. You got to try again. Now, why our or statement is useful is imagine if, I mean, do you care who picks bananas? Do you care if computer picks bananas or human picks bananas? Should you stop the game if either of those people pick bananas? Yeah, you should, right? You should stop the game and start it again because bananas should not be one of the options. So you don't care who picks something that's uh, the wrong one. You just care that wrong one is picked. That's why you would use a or. You would say if human equal equal bananas or computer equal equal bananas, then print blah, 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 right? In this case, it won't make sense, but then whatever, right? We, we print out this line of code. Else if, notice the else if, it's used to connect these. If you wanted to actually uh, write it as, uh, I can show you that later, but if you essentially want to write it, you know, what you have to do and you're writing it where these three uh, dots aren't there, right? You have three dots that are showing up here. So let me bring down this uh, if then whatever statement down for you. So if you ever have the case where these three dots are three, these three uh, greater than signs are there, then you have to put the else if not at the same indentation level as an if. But if you're doing it and you're writing this code as a script, then that's how it would be. The if and else if are at the same indentation level, okay? They're not at a different indentation level. That's very important, otherwise the code is not going to run, okay? And else if helps you join an if with an else if statement. And another one that you might need is else. And else does not care for a condition, okay? You see your if statement cares for a condition and then it runs the code. Your else if statement cares for a condition and if that condition is satisfied, it runs the code. Else does not take in condition. If none of these guys match, then else runs by default, okay? So if condition, all right, if this condition evaluates to true, then then this block of code runs okay good again or we don't care who did the thing we don't care who, who committed the crime if any one of them did we just break it um, realistically when you have this case where a human is bananas or i mean you're not going to put every single option ever that could be wrong, right? You, so you can't check for bananas or spaghetti or pizza. What you can check for is human did not pick, um, if one of them did not pick, uh, let's say, rock, papers, or scissors, then it should be wrong, right? So let's see if we can write that. If computer uh, does not equal, right, we can say rock, or computer does not equal scissors, or computer does not equal paper, then print wrong uh, choice, pick again, okay? So now let's try it. Now let's say computer is equal to rock, and let's run that piece of code, and it says wrong choice, pick again. Okay, so you can see how using the or statement here ended up giving me the wrong result. What I wanna make sure is that the computer is equal to any one of these, right? So let's try it like this. Let's say computer does not equal rock and computer does not equal scissors, right? And computer does not equal paper. Right, let's, uh, let me let me just go a little bit here, make it bigger, then print wrong 
choice pick again okay so the only way this code will run is if all of these things are true meaning computer is not rock computer is not scissors and computer is not paper right so if i made computer is equal to banana and i went up here and i ran this code you can see that it checked hey is computer rock is computer scissors is computer paper if it's not any of these then print wrong choice okay so you can see how powerful these combinators are is that what i would call them like your a logical operator boolean operators right like and and or you really really need them to be able to do this stuff okay to be able to do really powerful things okay i'm gonna cut this video off here hopefully you have a much better understanding of how this stuff works okay in the next video we will cover for loops and i will see you there